is uh, 9.32, so I'm going to honor those students who are here on time. Class of 2021, welcome. Uh, we are very excited that we're going to get to see uh, many of you starting on Monday. So um, today we have um, a list of items we are going to go over with you. And we will also be monitoring the chat. At this point, don't ask questions because we may be covering the items that you're putting in there and we will have time at the end, okay? So we are going to get started and remember um, this is being recorded, okay? All right, first thing is a daily screening tool. Each day before you come to school, we, you will have a link that you can see on Canvas that you can go to. And that link will ask you how you're feeling today. You will have to do that before you enter campus. We will practice that at the end of this meeting. Social distancing, wearing a mask. Yes, you must wear a mask while you are on campus and you must do your best to socially distance. Uh, we will have extra disposable masks here on campus. If you forget yours or the mask you have, um, if you need a new one. Enter exit pathways. Campus will not be open like it normally is. There will only be certain entrances open. We have not decided exactly what entrances are going to be open, but we do know that if you come to school and you walk north on Indian Hill by the football field, you're normally used to going through the pedestrian gate by the football field. That will be locked. So give yourself a few extra minutes. You will figure out and there'll be signs of where you can enter because we have to check you in to make sure you did the daily screening. Um, entry points map, are we gonna send one out over the weekend to our seniors? Is that, uh, will we know by Sunday night where there's, where the openings are to enter? Yes. Bell schedules, it is the same schedule as you've been following. So. The only difference is, uh, and Wednesdays will be remote. So if you're in cohort A, you will go to school Monday and Tuesday in person. Monday, one, three, five, seven. Tuesday, two, four, six, eight. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for posting that on the webinar. Um, you will notice there's something that's confusing. If you look at the bottom of Monday in green, it says cohort A in person during office hours. That's confusing. Monday is cohort A and Tuesday's cohort B. And we're just saying cohort A is in person Monday and Tuesday. Office hours are digital. They are not face to face. So that may be misleading to some of you. Wednesdays like it is. Thursday and Friday is cohort B. Now, things that come up when we go over this is if I am in cohort A, uh, we expect you to be at school in person Monday and Tuesday. If on Tuesday morning you are not feeling well and you decide, well, I'm going to just stay home and take period two remotely, you, you are going to be, you will be allowed to watch the lesson, the teaching, the teacher is teaching, but you will be marked absent. The reason we're doing that is your parents have decided whether you are coming back or not. So if you're in cohort A and you decide that, um, you're not feeling well, you better talk to your parents. And if it's on Tuesday during period two and you go to class remotely, you're right, you can watch the class, but you're still going to be marked absent and your parents will have to call in, uh, submit an email to the attendance office saying they are aware you did not attend class in person. 
Same thing for cohort B on Thursday and Friday. We expect you, if you are in cohort B, that we will see you physically on campus Thursday and Friday. So that is a real important piece and we will be telling your parents about that. Classroom instruction, what does it look like? Well, um, it is going to, we've never really, we, 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 we've never seen it before. Although lots of other schools have done it. And what it is, is that um, the teacher will have an iPad broadcasting their lesson. They will be teaching the class and your class may have up to 18 students in it. And, um, and if you're like on Monday, if you're in cohort B, you will have to, um, you'll just, you'll observe the lesson. And if the teacher will set up, if they want you to um, respond or not respond. So it's really gonna be up to the teacher of what it looks like. All right, I realize I went too far. Um, and I will just say right now, yes, I see many of you saying, oh my God, why do we have to be in person if we're gonna say we're in person and why can't we stay home? The reason is many parents are going to be going to work and they think you're gonna be at school and you decide, you know, I don't wanna get out of bed today. I'll just do period two from my room well, if your parents don't know that, um, that is a problem. So that is the reason. Also, at this point, you cannot decide to come back to school. If you have not chose cohort A or B, it means you have chosen to remain in a different program. So at this time, you cannot switch um, from cohort C or D into cohort A or B. Now I know lots of you are here because I asked all seniors to attend, so I appreciate it because when we do senior activities, um, you will have to follow these procedures on campus. I will clarify, I know I'm really confusing you people on what if you don't show to class on Monday and Tuesday in your cohort A. So you decide you're not feeling well Tuesday morning, cohort A during period two. You go to class remotely. You will be marked absent. You will tell your parents you were sick and you were unable to go to period two, but you went remotely. They will send an email to the attendance office saying that we, you realize, we realize you were supposed to be in class, you weren't, but your parent excused you. Then you will be marked present. At that point, you will be marked present. All right, I'm going to turn it over. Who's next? Who wants to go next on my team? We can talk about the, um, the student symptom tracker that we need to fill out every day so we're going to do that at the very end andrea okay we're going to try it at the very end so i'll jump in we're getting a lot of questions about um, tas and students with gaps in schedule so let me just address that if you are a ta or you have a gap in your schedule gap in your schedule would mean let's say you have a second period class you do not have a fourth period but you do have a six period, right? So that would be a gap fourth period. And what we're saying for TAs and students with gaps, if you're a TA, we're asking you not to come in physically, okay? To stay home and Zoom from home. We're trying to reduce the number of students on campus at any time. Um, that's what we're asking you to do. If for some reason you have to come in, let's say you carpool or you have a ride or whatever your situation is and you have to be on campus, then let us know and we'll work with your teacher if you're a TA, okay? To get you into the classroom again. We're monitoring exactly how many students are in each class at a time. The average cohort size for students in a class is 10. So most of your classes will have about 10 students physically present 
And obviously a lot of students will be on Zoom. The other question is gap. If you have a gap, you do not have to be on campus. Again, if you have a gap in your schedule, you do not have to be on campus. We do not take attendance for students with gaps. If for some reason you have a gap and you need to be on campus, we're going to ask you to go to the library, okay? The library will be the first place to go. We're monitoring, again, how many students we have on campus in different physical spaces like the library. So it'll be the library. It could be another part of campus. It could be somewhere outside. So if you have a gap, you do not have to be on campus. We do not take attendance for students with gaps. If for some reason you need to be on campus because you have a sibling or some other kind of responsibility, you will go to the library. That will be the place where you can go and then we'll work on how many students we have at each time. Okay, so I want to address those questions because they came up quite a bit. Why don't you go keep going, James? All right, so I think I'll pass it to um, Ms. Deligio to talk about assigned seats for desks and iPads charging at home. Okay, so a couple of things you need to know about the um, assigned seats. We have measured out our classrooms six feet apart um, to make sure that students that are sitting in class are six feet from each other. Um, you will see a piece of blue tape on certain desks, certain tables in specific locations. That's where you will be sitting. That's where teachers will create their seating charts. Um, if you're at a table and the blue tape is all the way on the left hand of the table, we ask that you not sit in the middle of the table or the right side of the table or wherever. Stay close to that left side of the table because that will allow you the six feet of distance between the next person. So teachers are working on creating those seating charts. We're working on finishing up the, um, the spacing right now. So we should have that done by the end of the room, uh, by the end of the week. The locker rooms are also being spaced out. So there may be a few of you who have elected to take a weightlifting class or some type of PE class. Um, we are also spacing those lockers out so that when students change, they're six feet apart from each other. Those lockers will be handed out through the PE teacher on those days. Um, your iPads need to be charged at home every night. There will not be an opportunity to charge them during the day. So the best thing to do is to close all the apps, charge it up at night, and then have it uh, ready to go in the morning. Okay. Um, locker information. We are, I know some of you have forgotten, it's been a year since you've been here and it's easy to forget your locker combination. We're gonna get that information out to the proctors so that you can get that information um, during passing periods, or you can come to the student services window and we can get you that information as well. Um, please, for the sake of um, social distancing, do not share lockers with your friends, whether that's a book locker or a PE locker. This is gonna be the year where it's really important that you not share lockers, not share books, things like that. Um, if you're in a class such as an art class or um, a science class where you are using equipment um, like microscopes, we are providing the teachers with equipment so that you can wear gloves. Um, there is some equipment in the classrooms where things can be disinfected as well. Um, I'll, I'll continue, um, Andrea. Uh, parking permits, that question's come up. Uh, no, you do not have to purchase any parking permits this year. Um, you will be able to park on the lot. Um, we do ask that you do not park in staff spaces or senior spots. Uh, we do have um, about 60 senior spots. Um, those will be shared uh, between students. Uh, those that are in cohort A, We'll have it one day. Those that are in corner B will have it the next days in those spots. Uh, Mr. Hernandez is, is working with students on that. But no, no parking permits this year. Um, also, lunch. Lunch will be provided for students. We do ask that you can grab your lunch and you can um, leave campus. We don't want students congregating at lunchtime. So it's a grab and go and any student can grab lunch. Um, you, uh, my understanding is you're not paying for lunch. Is that correct, Ms. Delizio? Mm -hmm. Okay. All 
All right, um, bathroom stalls, uh, some stalls within the bathrooms will be uh, closed. Um, and this is to allow for social distancing. Um, while uh, waiting for the bathroom, we do ask that you maintain social distance while in line. So we will have reduced uh, capacity in the restrooms just to um, allow for that social distancing. Ms. Delugio, did you touch upon classroom uh, cleaning? Classroom, uh, the touch spots, the highly touched areas, tops of desks, those types of things, door handles, those are gonna be um, cleaned nightly. Um, we will have a type of like, almost like a giant placemat um, that we were gonna provide for you. You're to take that placemat from class to class. It'll be yours, it'll have your name on it. You take it from class to class, you use it over your spot. So that will help protect you from um, anything else. We are also doing deep cleaning every Wednesday of our restrooms and um, our classrooms. We are gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that we clean our restrooms regularly. Again, those high touch spots. There will be disinfectant in classrooms if you think there's a need for it. Um, we also have on back order some um, keypad covers for those of you who are in computer labs. There are covers for both the keypads and the uh, mice so that you can use those items, take that cover off, throw it in the trash can and um, have that just for you. Okay, uh, PE clothes. I'm not sure we covered it. If you have a PE class, you can wear any, um, any PE clothes. It does not have to be CHS clothing, but your PE teacher will probably tell you it has to be uh, appropriate wear for exercise. So, um, all right. Uh, admin team, I don't, is it, would this be a good time to do the daily screening tool that they can try it? Yes, it was. Right. So if you have, um, if they have a phone or iPad, I guess all we're going to do is model what this looks like, right? Right. I can go ahead and put that into... Well, did you want me, Dr. O'Connor, to put that link in? Uh, if we could, or share a screen or something. I think I we should just show it to them. They'll get the link in Canvas. Okay. So in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So you can see the first thing you're going to put in is going to be your email address. That needs to be your CUSD email address. Um, you're going to have, you're going to enter today's date, your last name, first name. Are you attending in person today? You'll answer yes or no. Then it'll ask you symptom questions. Are you feeling sick? Yes or no. It gives you all of the known symptoms of COVID, which can be in the following. If you're feeling any of these symptoms, you will check either yes or no. To the best of your knowledge, have you been exposed to a person with COVID-19 in the last 10 days? You'll check yes or no, and then you will submit. When you submit, you are going to get an email response back. That email response is gonna thank you for filling out the survey. It's gonna have each day's current date. That is your ticket into the campus. So that'll be checked for every day as you walk in in those limited areas. So please make sure you have that out and ready so you don't hold people up and you have the correct date on there. A few other items came up. Health office. Health office has been moved. The health office is now going to be in the lobby of the theater. And if you go down to the health office and you have COVID symptoms like fever, aches, I know that sounds a lot like the flu, but if you have COVID symptoms, you will be put in one area of the theater lobby. 
And if you just have symptoms of um, maybe you have um, a headache or you're just down to take some medication, there will be another area for you to enter. So um, there'll be two uh, waiting areas down by for the health office, but it is no longer in the main office during COVID. Um, TAs, Dr. Mitchell, I think there was a question uh, about TA and if you have a period one and three and that's all you have for the day, can you answer that one? Yeah, I don't know if I saw the question, but uh, again, we're encouraging TAs not to come to, to campus or to class. If for some reason you need to be on campus, then we'll work with you and your teacher to make sure we have enough students, the appropriate number of students in a classroom. But if you have a gap in your schedule, or if you're a TA, we're encouraging you not to come to campus. So I think the question is, um, so if I only have third and fifth on one day when I go in person, I will only go to third in person and my fifth is TA. I do not, can you go home after third? Yes, do TAs need to zoom in Dr. Mitchell? TAs should zoom in for attendance purposes so that way your teacher knows you were there but again, we're encouraging you to stay out of the class if possible. If you have a situation where you need to be there because of your ride or your sibling, let us know. If I have a second period and then TA is fourth period and I leave, uh, I'll, I may not be on time to check in for my fourth period TA class. Um, just check in, it shouldn't take you more than a few minutes to get home. So you do need to check in um, as soon as you're home during that class period. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, their schedule, some aren't sure what room numbers, is their schedule in queue with room numbers? Right, so all, the, all of your student schedules are visible in Student Connect. So go to Student Connect, you'll see in Student Connect, your class, the teacher, and the room number. If for some reason you don't see that, then you can email me or email the office and we'll get back to you, but all that information is visible in Student Connect. Question about electives. Um, if you say you are coming back to school in person, the expectation is you will go to your elective because we have procedures in place that will allow you to attend the elective safely. Probably won't look like the elective used to look like, but yes, you need to go to that. A lot of questions about students not knowing what cohort they're in or questioning that. Um, if you are assigned A or B, you are coming to school. That is what A or B means. If you are in A or B and you do not want to come to school and your parents don't want you to be here physically, you need to let us know. And so that would be cohort D. Uh, I will put an email in the chat if you want to switch cohorts in that respect. Again, if you're A or B, the expectation is you will physically be here. But if you are 100% remote, you should be in cohort C, which is core or cohort D. And obviously your parents need to tell us what they want. You can't tell us uh, what, what you are going to do. So if your parents, if you're in A or B right now and your parents decide they want you to stay home, well then they need to use the email that's in the link. Uh, I, I've sent you this on Remind in Canvas, but those who are interested in attending the football game Friday night, the GoFam link is now working to reserve your ticket. Okay, listen, um, great turnout this morning. Um, thank you for being here. Um, this was our first time through, 
So thank you for your patience um, and your questions, because we have to do this three more times uh, with the other grade levels. So um, we're going to end this meeting. Again, some of you are raising your hand. If you have questions, please put it in the chat. Uh, we'll be here like two more minutes and then we are going to the webinar for class of 2022. All right, admin team, I think um, we probably should roll over to our next